Okay, let's review what we went over yesterday. All right, what did we talk about yesterday? We talked about uh, we talked about how these social contradictions result in crises. unless the working class takes responsibility for uh, the way these play out. We talked about the mind-body problem. Not the mind-body problem, I'm sorry. The subject-object problem. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm. <coughs> Thank you. Where... Um, we talked about uh, Georgi Lukács emphasizes uh, object fundamentalism, whereas the uh, modern academic and corporate environment emphasize subjective fundamentalism. Uh, we talk about, uh, let's see here. Okay. We talked about the, uh, the history of Baal worship and Gnosticism and how that relates to uh, subjectivity fundamentalism. <laughs> That's pretty much where we ended it. So we ended up mentioning Georgie Lukacs. Um, about how he alluded to the fact that he was a determinist. So moving on from there. <clears throat> in order to begin, this, this is paragraph 22. In order to begin, Lukacs engaged in the egregious form of revisionism. Blaming for Marxism's commitment to natural realism, Frederick Engels and his dialectics of nature. To Lukacs, when Marx referred to object material reality, he was merely opposing society's super individual horizon of meaning to individual subjectivity. It did not include objective natural reality, which Lukacs brackets as irrelevant to Marxism. Okay. Okay. So in other words, what he's saying is that to Lukacs, objective material <coughs> objective material reality is a social thing as opposed to an individual thing. It doesn't have to do with the material world as such. I think that's what he's saying. So, yeah, he clarifies later on. That's what he says. Society was objective and consciousness was subjective. Their dialectical interaction for Lukacs was the basis of history itself. Okay. So it's almost like structuralism, so it sounds like. But the material reality outside of social mediation nature was irrelevant to and outside this dialectic, outside history. The reason I mention Lukacs is because Western Marxism was founded on the false view that he resolved the problem of subject-object distinction from Marxism. 
but he did nothing of that sort. He just changed the definition of objectivity to exclude objective reality itself. Okay. Later on, he's going to sort of describe man's relationship to land and space and how that shapes the development of these societies. So you have these sorts of, I don't, know, I don't know if he alludes to it in this essay or not, but in some of his lectures he's talked about how there are land-based peoples and sea-based peoples and how that impacts sort of the, um, the trajectory of these, of these societies, of these cultures. In other words, you can't ignore the objective circumstances when you're talking about um, social development and the dialectical process. Okay. Here, objectivity is just the reified totality of social relations denied of active subjective responsibility. This obviously contradicts Marxist materialism for which objectivity does, does include nature, not just society as some purely transcendental horizon. And it isn't just Marx. Um, Marx at that time came directly after the Enlightenment thinkers. And when the Enlightenment thinkers spoke of a state of nature, they definitely had in mind both social relations and materially finite conditions. So, for instance, when you talk about Thomas Hobbes, for instance, he's, when he talks about his state of nature, he's definitely talking about, well, there's this system of lack, and then that creates this antagonistic sort of fundamental uh, metaphysical sort of assumption about human social relations. Or if you talk about uh, John Locke, uh, in his second treatise, right off the bat, he gets into man's relationship with land, right? Uh, so Marx is speaking to this um, intellectual tradition because that's that's what he came directly after and so yeah that reading of Marx would make no sense because all of the Western traditions that were immediately preceding Marx definitely held held the land and objective reality outside of society as being of importance at least of some importance Without including nature and okay, yeah, without including nature in the definition of material reality, then class consciousness consists in dissolving all society and its, all its objectivity into a pure subjective self-consciousness. Hmm. Let's read that again. Without including nature in the definition of material reality. then class consciousness consists in dissolving all society in all its objectivity into a pure subjective self-consciousness. Okay. In other words, it's sort of extracting the social self-consciousness from any sort of concrete material condition, if I read that correctly. For Lukacs, the proletarian class is the first subject-object which does exactly this. Hmm. Okay, for Lukacs, the proletarian class... This is a gross perversion of Marxism, and it is easy to see the lineage of the Lukacsian view in the Frankfurt School, the New Left, postmodern academia, gender studies, and wokeism as a whole. <laughs> okay. All right. 
Yeah, so he's basically talking about a form of structuralism where all of these social norms are based in social relations and they're not tethered to anything real. They're not tethered to anything that's related to actual material conditions. They're not tethered to anything that has to do with, you know, limitations that human beings have to experience, right? They're sort of arbitrary, they're structural, they're, they're something that, that's all like game theory in a way, right? You know, as opposed to, you know, I'm dealing with a material condition and that determines, you know, a lot of the the norms that I have to deal with. In other words, I, de I develop these norms in order to grapple with the fact of physical limitation and and uh, my needs and the, the needs of the people around me and how we relate to each other because of that. Okay. But is Lukaxian Western Marxism really to blame? In fact, when Lukacs decided to reject Engels, he was just compromising with institutional modern realism. Institutional modern realism. Engels' dialectics of nature was too metaphysical is metaphysical in scare quotes because it saw something human in reality. In other words, the opposite of a metaphysical distrust in reality. Okay. Let's look that up. Institutional modern realism. Okay. Here's a Wikipedia page. It says realism as it relates to international relations. Okay. All right. It's got a picture of Niccolo Machiavelli here. All right. Okay. All right, I'm, okay, I'm familiar with this concept. I don't think it's what he's real, um, alluding to here. It's this idea that there's this anarchic global system and that international relations has to do with competing self-interested states. So, I mean, I don't, I don't think that's what he's referring to. Let's see what else Google shows us. Okay. okay, that makes more sense. All right, so there's this other term called realist institutionalism. And here it says realists and liberal institutionalists accept that institutions exist to manage interdependence and that relative power determines how conflicts are resolved and authoritative decisions are taken. Okay. That definition seems to make a little bit more sense. Okay, so in fact, when Lukacs decided to reject Engels, he was just compromising with institutional modern realism. Institutional modern realism meaning sort of this Frankfurt School type analysis of everything being determined sort of by power dynamics. Yeah, that makes more sense. So now we're talking about, so in other words, he, yeah, in context that makes more sense because he talks about Lukacs is following the, the Frankfurt School philosophy, right? And so instead of talking about society as being 
being bound by bound by material conditions and instructed by material conditions. Now he's saying actually it's bound by power relationships. Yeah, and that which is consistent with what came out of the Frankfurt School. Okay. So then that next statement makes more sense, too. Engels' dialectics of nature was too metaphysical because it saw something human in reality. So in other words, the human and the nat and the state of nature shape each other, right? Because it goes back to this sort of idea of design, right? Where it's not the object and it's not the subject apart, but it's the two of them together that creates something meaningful, right? So it's not just these, what he's saying is it's not just these power dynamics that shape the human experience. Rather, it's material conditions and the way human beings grapple with these material conditions that then creates the human experience. That makes a little bit more sense. That's the end of this sub-thread. Let's see how long the next one is. Okay. Okay, this next one, he's got kind of a standalone paragraph here, I'll read that one. In other words, James Lindsay is a fucking moron when he blames wokeism's metaphysical distrust in reality on Marxism. In actual fact, the distrust in reality is the very basis of bourgeois modernity. They can be thought as the entire premise of the Age of Enlightenment itself. The distrust in reality is the very basis of bourgeois modernity. Well, that can certainly be said to be the case of Western modernity in its current form. Because even its nominally Marxist influences yield this so sort of hyper-individualized power dynamics based sort of analysis of the human experience instead of an analysis of the human experience as being based in uh, groups of people getting together to to grapple with the challenges of reality in a cooperative way right it doesn't really give any sort of credence to to society itself as being meaningful, right? Because it's just it's sort of like an object, a social object that imposes itself on the individual and that's how they're looking at it. So it's sort of like how you know, your body needs iodine to survive. And if you don't have iodine in your diet, but you have like, I think it's barium in your diet, then it substitutes iodine for barium. But barium is toxic. So it's almost like, based on what he's saying, like George Lukacs um, took the working class element of the theory and substitute it for this sort of hyper individualism. And then he took the material conditions that humans are part of. And for that, he substituted social power dynamics. And so you have this sort of toxic mutation of Marxism. I think that's what he's saying. And if so, that makes sense. That would account for what we're seeing in the West today. <laughs>
especially in the corporate environment and the academic environment. And my lunch break ends in five minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and call it. Talk to you all later.